This is by far one of the worst out of all of them. In our series on how college indoctrinates uh, students, we have a book here on social problems. This is the first college that I went to, and you see I have it all tabbed off. We have a lot to cover today. So in college, you might want to know, well, why are things so bad? Everyone talks about how bad things are, and we want to get back to the good old days. So you might take a class in social problems. Now, this is all under sociology. This was my minor. So you take the class social problems, you say, hey, well, let's see what's going on in society. What's the problem? Well, as you can see by all the tabs, they might as well opened up the book and just said, the Catholic teachings are the problems of the world today. That's all they had to say, rather than go out and break every single thing down. Because as you see, as we move through this, basically what they're saying is all the problems of the world, they don't say this explicitly, but the teachings of the Catholic faith, the traditional teachings of the Catholic faith, contribute to basically all the social problems in the world, or many of them, we'll say. Again, in 1917, Our Lady of Fatima said that Russia will continue to spread her errors throughout the world if... We don't have the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the only way to have the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is to fulfill Our Lady of Fatima's five commands, Roman Catholic SOS, pray the rosary every day, consecrate yourself to Mary, scapular, wear the scapular, offer, offer up your sufferings, and Saturdays, the first Saturday devotion, which is coming up this week. <clears throat> so social problems. Let's go through this book. Let's see how the errors of Russia have been spreading. Now, this is a class that I would have taken in 2003, or 2004. So one thing you notice, we're on, we're on page two. And the very first thing you see, this is at the time where, where George W. Bush was the president. Now, I'm, I'm not saying George W. Bush or conservatism is the answer to our problems. Uh, definitely not. I, I'm, I'm with G.K. Chesterton, where he said that basically capitalism and socialism are two heads of the same beast. That beast is Freemasonry, and it has two heads. Capitalism and socialism. And basically the big business, which you could say conservatism, is in bed with big government. So big government and big business, those are the two heads, conservatism, uh, liberalism, they're, they're part of the same body, which is Freemasonry. But you could see right away in this book, importantly to see, they're, demon they're clearly demonizing one of the political parties. Now remember, education, what I would think education would be, is you say, if you have a two-party system, you say, these are the pros and cons of this system. These are the pros and cons of the other system. That, that would seem to be how you do education, right? Present the facts, present both sides um, as accurately as possible. But we're seeing right away as a clear demonization of one of the political parties. So if you wonder why most people come out of college as liberals, well, if you wanted to know about social problems, you take this class and right away you see the picture of the Republican candidate. Now it says here, so now we're on chapter two, we're on page 22. And who's the chap the, on the chapter here? Again, George W. Bush. And what do you notice at the bottom? It says Christian Coa, I'm, I'm assuming this says, this would normally say coalition if you took it all the way through. Point being is the first two chapters, the cover page was a Republican. So it's, they're showing you very clear who the who the who they believe the problem is again i'm not saying republicanism is the answer to to our to our crisis that we're in but i'm saying that they 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 want to show you who they think the bigger problem is and and what what you see here is the bias they talk about bias in the sips in the system right here well there's a clear bias in this textbook right off the bat so the very first thing we see Chapter two, the thesis of this book is that the problems of the U.S. society result from the distribution of power and the form of the economy. Wrong. Right off the bat, they got the thesis wrong. The number one problem with the United States, the number, the number one problem with any country, the problem with the whole world, the primary issue is always religion. It's faith. Why? Because this is the metaphysical foundation of everything. All, or the major problem of the system is that we've departed from the Catholic faith. The world has departed from the high Middle Ages and the, the connection of the church and state, which is the number, the number two issue is political. The tertiary issue, the third issue is economics. So religion is always the primary issue. Politics is always the secondary issue. And economy is always the third issue. They're saying everything goes back to economy. Well, if, you're, if you got the, if your metaphysics was right, if you were built on 
the ontologically true religion, the Roman Catholic faith, the teachings of the Catholic faith of all time, then that's a solid foundation from which there you build the proper politics, the social reign of Christ the King. We just yesterday passed the feast of Christ the King, and that's that was um, October 30th, this Sunday, Sunday, October 30th this year, and that shows that it's it's Christ is not just the King of Heaven, but also the King of Earth. Everything falls under the dominion of Jesus Christ. So to say religious freedom, that doesn't make any sense. Because just like you don't have mathematical freedom to say two plus two does not equal four, you, you, can't, you can't say that. Well, in the same way, you can't, say, you can't put all religions on an equal playing field. Even though you have many classmates of all different religions, ultimately there is an objective ontological truth that's external to me and my friends. So... If the Catholic faith is true, then by definition, other, but, or, all other religions are false. And not only false, but they're antithetical to Catholicism. Now, does, does that mean I'm saying all the, the people of the different religions are bad? No. A lot of these people are some of my best friends. But I'm saying the religion, their religions are an enemy, not only to the Catholic faith, but because the Catholic faith is true. They are enemies to all of mankind. Anything contrary to the Catholic faith. Not necessarily the people, but their, their system of, of belief. So they have it wrong right here. The thesis of this book is that all the problems emanate from the economy. There are problems with the economy, as we'll talk about. But it's not, it's, it, it's not economic. The primary problem is not economic. It's religious. If you start from a different beginning, you're, likely to have a, you're, you're definitely going to have a different endpoint. So in the bottom of this page, page 23, industrial societies organize their economic activities according to one of the two fundamental forms, capitalism or socialism. So it says, then it says, although no society has a purely capitalistic or socialistic economy. So, so right there, they're laying it out. These are your two choices. And as we said before, they're two heads of the same Freemasonic beast. So they're setting you up. Now they talk a little bit about capitalism. They talk about socialism then. Now, remember, we talked about the errors of Russia spreading. This is a textbook from 2004. They say you need to differentiate between authentic and spurious socialism. Now, why would they do that? Because they know socialism is associated with, it, it, so, it, socialism was embraced by Cuba, China, the Nazis. The Nazis are the socialist party. We know the Soviet Union, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. So what they need to do, because they know, people will say all the time, Look at how many, more people have, have been killed in the name of God than any other than, than any other person or any any other thing. Wrong. That's demonstrably false by an order of hundreds of millions. If you look at the total body count of people who were killed in the name of religion, and that's terrible. One person dead in the name of religion is is bad, right? If it's if it's not just war, right? But when you talk about the number of people who were killed in the name of socialism and atheism. Nazism, you, know, so you have, you have the, the Nazis, you have Mao in China, and you have Stalin in the Soviet Union. So they have, they know that they have a huge body count, which they did not acknowledge. So what did they do? They say we have to differ differentiate between authentic and spurious ca um, uh, socialism. It says, thus, it's a fallacy to equate true socialism with the politic with the politico economic systems found in Cuba and the People's Republics of China. So they're, they're, setting, they're setting it up where that's not, this is not really the way it works. Well, how many people have to be killed? How many, what, what does the body count need to be to realize that socialism is evil? So that's there. They're showing you where they're leaning and they're tipping their hand here. So what they're saying um, in page 27 is that the key is a leveling of advantages. Everything is about equality. And remember, equality... We're seeing, we're seeing equality being praised as a first principle, taken as fact, with no qualification. What does it mean? What does equality mean? Because God clearly didn't create everything equal. God created, obviously, the, the Blessed Mother of far greater dignity than all the saints. There's different choirs of angels. There's a, di there's a hierarchy of angels. Christ established a hierarchy in his church. When we're born, some people are taller, some people are shorter, some people are better looking. There's just... They're, all we see is inequality. Now, the, what they're what they're really looking at, what they're if they said this properly, if you look at things through a Thomistic lens, through Aristotelian uh, Aristotelianism, 
It's justice. Justice is important. Now, how that plays out, the Catholic social teachings are all there. But the goal is not just equality as such. What, is it, what does it mean to, be, to, to, to have justice? Justice is what you're looking at, the virtue of justice, not the first principle of equality. Basically, what they say is everything needs to be equal. There's no basis for that. That's just an assertion. They assert that, and then everything builds on top of that. That's not how you build a foundation, right? We're coming from the place that God is omniscient, omnipotent, om omnibenevolent. He created, created everything out of love. We're in a fallen human race, right? A fallen society because Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. So we know that and we know justice is one of is one of the main virtues. So there's a foundation built. Whereas when you take equality as such and make that a first principle, you go, you go off the rocker pretty fast, as you'll see later with this book. So basically, what they're after is leveling of the advantages. Now, what do we see on page twenty nine? Whole page dedicated to who is that? That's Karl Marx. A whole page dedicated to them. Are they demonizing him? Are they saying what? Are they saying that we shouldn't listen to him? No, listen to what it says. The very first, the very first thing, Karl Marx is one of history's greatest social theorists. His ideas have fueled revolutionaries and revolutions. Bad. Then, as you skip down, capitalism, Marx maintained, also carries the seeds of its own destruction. Now, I would agree with that. Capitalism, when you really look at it, is state-sponsored usury. Okay, so I'm, I'm not, I, you know, capitalism is better than socialism, but that doesn't make capitalism inherently good. Okay, so where Marx asserts that capitalism contains the seeds of its own destruction, I would take that a step further, and I would say any economic system, any political system, any system that you could imagine that is not built on the foundation of Christ the King, the social reign of Christ the King, the teachings of the Catholic faith of all time, that carries within itself the seeds of its own destruction. So Marx name, names one ideology. I, I name all of them other than Catholicism. So right there, a tribute to Karl, Karl Marx, and we're on page 29. I skip through. What do we have here? The next page I have, page 61. Now they're talking about Family planning, because now they're talking about how to solve some. Of the, so the chapter three is world population and global inequality. And it says here, family planning. The second possibility is to control the population growth immediately. Okay. And what it says is, despite the, the next page, despite the Catholic hierarchy's resistance to, cat, to family planning, some nations with overwhelming Catholic majorities have extremely low birth rates. So what they're saying here is, number one, family planning is an option to stop uh, world population and global inequality. They're they're positing that as one of the solutions. And the next thing they're doing here is they're they're saying that even though the Catholic faith rejects, and they always talk they always talk about the Catholic faith as the contrast here. They they say even though the Catholic hierarchy is resistant to family planning, Catholics themselves are practicing family planning. So the bad actions of Catholics does not invalidate the teachings of the Catholic faith. The Catholic faith is still true. And, and all the worse for Catholics, what they're basically saying is, if you're Catholic, look, if you're Catholic, look, 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 your people are practicing family planning. Even though the Pope and the bishops, the, the teachings of all time, the tradition is saying there's no family planning. No, what, what are they really talking about? Contraception. That's what they're really talking about here with family planning. Despite your teachings against contraception, all your people are contracepting, and they wouldn't be wrong there. But that's a failure on us as Catholics, not a failure of our faith. Certainly not a failure of God. Then, chapter four, threats of the environment. Again, we want to be good stewards of the, of the environment, but we're on chapter four. We've said nothing at all. And I know it's not a Catholic school, but still, if you're really trying to get at the heart of the social problems, you would say... Our problem is a split from realism, a break from Aristotle, a break from, a break from Thomas Aquinas, a break from the Roman Catholic Church. You need to know that, even if these books aren't saying it. They're talking about all these other threats. We move on in the book. Now they're going to set up race, racial inequality. You wonder how BLM and everything got all, got all this support. Well, this is what people are learning in college. And, and what, what are they saying here? Let 
Look at this. The very first thing. One can accurately describe the United States as a total racist society in which every major aspect of life is shaped to some degree by the core racist realities. So right off the bat, they're saying you, you, United States is totally racist. So you wonder why all these young people have this in their head. There it is. One can accurately describe the United States as totally racist and inaccurate definitions of what race really is. I'm not white. I'm a biracial person. I'm part Italian. I'm part Polish. There is no race of white. That's a complete social construct. No one is from white. You know, that doesn't even make sense. What country are your ancestors from? I am biracial. I, sh I should be able to say that. I'm Italian and Polish. So they define what race is. They de they, they're defining what race is. And they're saying that we're totally racist in our country. Page 247, we're on gender and power. More recently, scholars have challenged the universal patriarchy. Current thoughts tend to follow the latter course. So they're, what they're saying is, you know, down with the patriarchy, whereas we know God did not create man and women equal. Uh, hu husbands are supposed to love their wives. Wives are supposed to serve their husbands. The wife, the husband is the head of the family. The woman is the heart of, fam of, the, uh, heart of the family. Equal dignity, but there's different roles. They're not equal. Remember, uh, St. Joseph was the head of the Holy Family. Mary is infinitely, his wife is infinitely greater than St. Joseph and, she, and God wanted her to serve St. Joseph and she did that perfectly. And then you look at Christ himself, God incarnate, he was subservient to his mother and his father. So there's nothing wrong with, with inequality in terms of the, the authority structure. But what they're saying here is scholars have challenged the patriarchy and current thoughts tend towards this. So they, they, want, they want their students to see that the patriarchy is bad. We're, we're not there anymore. That was a more primitive society. So that's going to help destroy the family. Then we see about, we have more topics. Oh yeah, we, going on about, the, it says about the Bible and, and all this. So the next page after it talks about, what was, so here we are about religion. It talks about male and female clergy. It's basically saying here that, that, the cat it talks about the Catholic faith. They don't ha they don't have male um, priests. They can't be because Christ made it made apostles. He didn't. He chose all men, and Christ Himself was a man. So it's 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 talking about the trends. How now more and more of these of these um, so called Christians, these um, these Christian sects, these break off groups from Catholicism, they're having more and more female clergy. So that's again. Not good. It's certainly not meant to discriminate against women. It's just they have men and women have different roles. And of course, they have pages dedicated to that, that, that men and women don't have to have different roles. Now you see page 273, fighting the system, the feminist movement in the United States. And they're praising this as such a good thing. Uh, you move on. Now we're, now we're on to um, sexual orientation, chapter 10. And what do you see? Pride Roma. So what do they do? What do they do? And there's a statue of an angel. So what are they doing? Not only are they showing, um, not only are they glorifying the the homosexual agenda, but what what are they doing? They're showing it in Rome. Very important to see. They're setting this all up. This gay pride took place in Rome. So there, it's like an in-your-face to Catholics. As look, even in Rome, it's going on. They're not saying that. But you could read between the lines. You're smart. You could. You have your common sense. What are they doing here? Now, what they talk about here is they say deviance, they define deviance, is a behavior that does not conform to social expectations. It is socially created. Okay, so deviance is a behavior that does not conform to social expectations. It is socially created. Th this concept that they're talking about, if it's not created by God, anything, just so we know, they're saying that deviance is socially created. Anything that's not created by God is socially created. In other words, any concept that was that was not that is not made by God is by definition socially created. People just made it up. So this concept of deviance right there fails their own litmus test. Deviance is clearly socially created. I don't see anything in Catholic teaching talking about deviance. Yeah, of course, there's a concept of deviance. And what are they talking about? They're really referring to sin. They say here later on in page 281, deviance is relative and not absolute. What are they really talking about? When we speak about um, 
we speak about homosexuality. And again, I, I say this carefully because remember, we, we live in a fallen society. So man's inclinations, our inclinations are disordered. So we all have disordered inclinations, all humans. We're not talking about obviously Jesus or Mary. We're saying the people, we have disordered inclinations. So just having inclinations towards homosexuality in and of itself is not a sin. But we have to be clear that the inclination is disordered. Does that mean we should ostracize the person, alienate them, and make them feel terrible? No, that's the opposite of what Catholicism would do or what Catholicism teaches. Even if there are some Catholics who do that, that's not right. No, we, we, we love the person, but we hate, we hate the sin or the disorder. So we don't follow the disorder. What they're saying is deviance is relative and not absolute. What they're basically looking at it as, as sin. They're saying, really, there is no sin. Forget about the word sin. There's deviance. And, and not only is there not sin, there's only deviance, but it's not objective. It's not black and white. It's, it's not absolute. So it's all relative. So they're promoting here relativism. We go on. Under sexual orientation still, they talk a lot about Catholic faith, Pope John Paul II, the bishops talking about condemning, rightly rightly condemning um, the promotion of homosexuality. It doesn't mean don't support people who are struggling. Of course, we should have support groups for people who are struggling. That's that's what Jesus did. He came to help the people who are suffer to suffer. Who Christ came to help the people who are suffering. But it doesn't mean we could call evil good or good evil if something is disordered. We have to call it that. We have to call disorder disorder. We have to call order order. But it says here, many congregations and denominations are more accepting of homosexuality. In other words, look where things are progressing. And then it goes on in the next page saying, homosexuals are more likely than other people to have problems with guilt, anger, self-esteem, owing to prevailing religious views, occupational discrimination, and the, respect, and the rejection they experience because they differ from the sexual norms of society. So what they're doing here, and this, isn't, and, and this is not um, footnoted, they're not, they're not quoting anything. They're not referencing different, um, they're not, they're not referencing different studies. No, no basis. They're saying because of religious views, because of discrimination, because of rejection experience, that's why, um, homosexuals are more likely to have problems with guilt, anger, and self-esteem. Not because the, the, the acts the acts are sinful, not because the inclination is disordered, uh, not because they might have some some disorders within themselves, but it's because of all this negative from the outside. So it's it's freeing them of the of any kind of blame at all whatsoever. And again, we want to deal lovingly and tenderly with with anyone who has disorder. We all have disorder. I hope people are tender and accepting of me despite my disorders. But what they can't do, if you're helping me with one of my disorders, you're not going to tell me that it's not disordered. You would say, Gene, you're struggling here. This is this is a disordered inclination. I love you and I want to help you through this. That's the proper attitude to have towards all this. Talk about the sodomy laws in the bottom of the page. Remember, uh, sodomy is one of the sins that cries to heaven for vengeance. So absolutely not some something that should be promoted at all. We move on. Page uh, 321, Problems of Inequality, and, and they're talking about um, disability. Um, so, there's, so what they're saying is they're saying people who are disabled are being marginalized and being discriminated against. Well, without going into that topic, they're running into an issue here. They're trying to promote um, people who are struggling with disabilities. Of course, we should account for people with disabilities. We should treat them uh, with, with love, with respect. We should help them as best as we can. They're, they're raising this up as this is one of the major problems. But look what they're saying here, the abortion issue. They said pro the primary rationale for prenatal testing is to determine whether the fetus is normal or will result from a child with disability. This issue is a thorny one for those who favor a woman's right to choose. And we are among them. So they're pushing abortion explicitly there. They said we're among the people who um, favor women's right to choose. When a woman chooses to abort a fetus rather than to give birth to a disabled child, she accepts society's negative views about people with disabilities. So they said, in the next page, it says, abortion presents a major quandary for feminists who defend the right for women to choose, 
a right that can conflict with the er with the efforts to promote acceptance, equality, and respect for for people with disabilities. So basically, because again, they're holding equality as their first principle. What Catholics hold as their first principle is the moral law set forth by God that is taught to us through the Catholic Church. And what they're saying is, we're for abortion, but we're but we're in a, we're having a big issue when it comes to disabilities because if if we know someone's going to have a disability if we if they could test uh, the, the um, inside the mother and see that that baby is going to be born with a disability we don't want to discriminate against the the baby with the disability so we don't want to we don't want to kill them he said it's an issue for they say it's a thorny issue it's a quandary for feminists that's crazy why because equality is their first principle they're not basing it on absolute moral truth as revealed to us by God so it, it for them it, if you're gonna have a perfect so for them it's they're saying basically if you're gonna have a perfectly healthy baby um, it's okay to have an abortion but if you know you're gonna have a, a baby with a disability then well we got we gotta think twice before having an abortion because we don't want to discriminate against people who have a disability. All kinds of craziness. Where's the Catholic faith? It's completely consistent. There's no abortion. And then the last, the last thing that I have here, the last um, part that I've tabbed off is under laws. This is under social structure and individual deviance, crime and justice. Of all the requirements for a just system, okay, now they're talking about justice. That's better than starting with equality. Justice is a virtue. Equality is a first principle. Of all, the, of all the requirements for a just system, the most fundamental is a body of non-discriminatory laws. They're saying that's the most fundamental thing for a, for a, for a legal system, non-discriminatory laws. Why? Because they're starting with equality as a first principle. You don't start with equality and then build on top of it. You start with the objective morals objective faith and morals, the teachings of the Catholic Church, and from there, you build on top of that. Otherwise, you get all these crazy outcomes. Again, this this book is really dangerous. It's, it's emphasizing the importance of thinkers like Karl Marx, um, very anti-Catholic, and this is what college students, this is an undergraduate class, so if a college student said, I wanted to learn more about the problems of society, it's a very hard lean to the left. It's a complete anti-Republican book, and again, Republicanism is not the answer. They're two heads of the same beast. So, but you see what they're, they're pushing you further, further and further to the left. It's done, it's done deliberately, and it actually speaks out again, directly against either the teachings of the Catholic Church or Catholics. You need to be aware of it. Remember the solution, the only solution to social problems is Christ the King. Any, situ any um, society that is not based on the social reign of Christ the King is destined to fail. And we know that the only way to get to that social reign of Christ the King, Our Lady of Fatima revealed, is to fulfill her five commands, and then we'll have the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That's what solves the social problems. Not family planning, not feminism, not BLM, the social reign of Christ the King, and it starts with fulfilling Our Lady of Fatima's commands. Roman Catholic SOS. Pray the rosary every day, consecrate yourself to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, wear the brown scapular, offer up your sufferings, and practice the first Saturday devotion. God bless you. God bless your, your loved ones. Stay with us. We'll give you another video sometime this week. Take care.